Welcome to our virtual wildflower weekend. We have a lot of wildflowers to look for here. Go. We are here in Kentucky, the Rev River Gorge, at the wilds. There are cabins here you can rent right on this property. And this is a book that our Nana and Grandpa wrote. It's Wildflowers and Ferns of, of Red River Gorge in the Greater Red River Basin. Nana, we should go look by the creek because there's a lot of flowers right there. All right, let's do it. We got a flower, and it is a tooth fork. These are edible, and they're just tiny. They got tiny little um, serrated leaves, and there's like three. And then the flowers, there's lots of them on here, and they are edible, and they're very delicious. Okay. Right next to the tooth fork here, we got ruin enemies. This little white flower it has these little white pollen things, and then and we got these spring beauties here, right all next to the tooth wart that we just showed. And there are these little white flowers with the like, pink veins, and they are also very edible. And over here we have some blood root. Okay, so we found. So here's our ruin enemy that we've been looking at. And right here is our, and the blood root, you can see the difference in the petals. Where this one has a lot less, and they're a little bit bigger. And this one has a lot more. They have this, the, the ruin enemy has a lot more little, like pollinator things. And also has a lot more flowers. And the blood root has like a big leaf right next to it. And if you dig it up, it brings this big red, or it, you can dye stuff with the root. So we'll get that out, and we'll be right back. And here we dug it up and washed it off. And it has a hum. A very red root, but the thing that's even better about it is uh, if you open it up, it has this dye that people used to dye things with, and it works very well. You can use it as food coloring, and, makeup. and it's orange, but blood root, blood root, yeah. It looks kind of like a carrot, if you look at it. And it dies very, very well. That's great. Okay, so here we have in our yard this little blue violet. Um, they start blooming about this time. Here's one that's about to bloom soon. They're really pretty, and they have it inside, and it's really pretty. It's like white. And then all these little veins that lead up to make the purple. And you can see them like all around. And you, they are edible. You can't eat them. Only the flower do. And they come in many different colors. Like yellow and white. And a bunch of different colors. Okay. So these little, the little um, petals right here. They're like little landing pads. So when a little insect comes to uh, pollinate it, it lands on so them. So then they can pollinate it easier than most of the other flowers that are here. But they're very delicious. Okay, this is my favorite wildflower. This is Nana talking. My favorite wildflower is bird's foot violet. And I love it because it has the, the dark purple on top and the lighter purple on the bottom and to me it looks very royal and regal and it likes to grow in sunny kind of dry spots like this hillside next to the trail look at that beauty okay so here we have a red bud they're really pretty they're all around here and they are very pretty they're like a pink purple i don't know what color that is but they're like they're pretty, they can get pretty big. Um, they're not like the biggest tree though, and they are edible and they're really good. You can 
put them and make jam with them and stuff. So we're here at Misadon Farm, um, the site of many wildflower walks in the past. This was my, Dan and my farm, um, but our daughter and son-in-law bought the farm. And now we're looking for flowers. American toads. Yeah. You have a crap ton of and there are hundreds of them, probably thousands. Right, we're gonna look at it. Okay, so yeah, we'll see this. The, the little scratch marks. So something obviously lives in here. Yeah. Probably be, I would think something in here would be chipmunk or yeah. even some kind of snake. They might lay their eggs in here, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I but think you're right, of the something, marks. something's been yeah, chewing that out. Snakes really do that. Though. Not, not no. snakes, but probably a, a rodent. Yeah. Like. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so in this hole, this little bum hole tree, <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be looking in here to see if we find any snakes or anything that would live in here, because you can tell something's been going back and forth in here because it's all scratched up yes. on the side. Yeah. Very good. It's just a bunch Allie, of don't go in. A ravine salamander. This is a tiny little baby. He's really cute. Oh. And he's fast. And he likes to jump. We got another one. Look at that. Salamander. They're really cool. They're kind of like chubby. They and we have really a worm. And Callie right found a worm. Callie found a worm. I saw it These popping out of the ground. These are cool because they look like they have lichens grown on them. Uh huh. Which you can find on trees like. Right here. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. See the lichen? Yeah. Uh, again? A slimy salamander. And if you sometimes yeah. you hold them, you get kind of gooey do. stuff on your hands. And then it's hard to get off, like a slug. So, another wildflower that is likes dry um, conditions is the golden alexander. Right, so, here we found a little smooth earth snake. This is full grown. They also don't bite. They're a lot like the worm snakes, they have a less pointy tail. How do you tell the difference between those? Their tails are less pokey. Worm snakes have like a lot more stiff tails. Underneath this rock. Yeah. Wow. That's a good find. So here we have bluets. They're another tiny little flower. Um, they're kind of like a bluish purple, like a periwinkle kind of, with the yellow inside, and they're really tiny. There's big bunches of them. They're not edible, so don't eat them. And then over here we have a little worm snake. This is a little baby. Full grown is probably like that big. They're really tiny. They do not bite. They're really nice. Um, you can tell they're a worm snake because of their little tail. It's like a little pointed thing. And they're not, they don't chase you. Snakes don't chase you. They're really nice. All he's doing with his tongue is just sniffing me. Mm -hmm. and, and the little pointed tail, what do they use that for? Why do they have a pointy? When an animal tries to take to eat it, they it will use the tail to poke the animal in the yeah. eye to try to get it to let go. Ow! Well, yeah. Would you? Would you? They're let really it smooth. Go? They're not slimy though. Okay, mm. Kelly, do you want to hold it? If you turn them over, he has a little one. kind of lip. Oh, Grandpa. So sitting here next to a small vernal pond that uh, Judy and I created about 23 years ago, we put up here. And while the first year you get a few species that come in, like wood frogs and spotted salamanders, uh, after a dozen years, 15, even 20 years, you start to get other species like four-toed salamanders that come in and, and lay eggs. And they're, they're kind of considered the old growth of amphibians when it comes to uh, these ponds. Uh, so we're gonna look for four-toed salamanders under places like this um, where they lay their eggs and see what we can We got find. something here. If you look here, these little eggs are the eggs of this salamander here, the four-toed salamander, which is kind of a neat salamander in Kentucky. They're, they're kind of plain looking on top, but when you turn them over, they have a white belly with spots. Isn't that cool? So you can see that as I, they don't like to be turned over, obviously, but this is a female. And why is she still here? And so what happens is, this is really neat. They, the females come and lay their eggs under moss uh, and they, they sit there with the eggs until the ponds fill up uh, with, with spring rain. And then the ponds fill up and the eggs hatch and they, they drop, basically drop into the water 
uh, as larvae, really small little salamander larvae, about you know a quarter inch or so, and they're they're perfect in terms of uh, mosquito control. One of the best ways to control mosquitoes is to build a pond, and, and of course that sounds counterintuitive, but what happens is the mosquitoes come to the pond, they lay their eggs, and if you have things in there like salamanders with their babies or their larvae, the larvae uh, are eating machines and they eat multitudes of, of mosquito larvae. And then you get dragonflies that lay eggs and the adult dragonflies, also called mosquito hawks, will eat the adult mosquitoes. So it's, it's a great habitat uh, for woodland species like spotted, uh, the four-toed salamanders, wood frogs, and a number of other species. Uh, a nest of four-toed salamander eggs, you can see them right there. They're under this moss growing on this, this boulder and again, once they, the water kind of raises up, these things just drop into, into the water. So how cool is that? Grandpa. Yeah. There's some eggs over here. Yeah, yeah there's, there's some eggs, eggs over, over, here over here of spotted salamanders and Jefferson yeah. salamanders. Right and then the, that's right, we can pull one up. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So check this out. I know what you're thinking. This is, looks, looks like somebody blew their nose, but it isn't. So this was laid about probably four weeks ago. And so the, what you're seeing in here are the elongating larvae uh, of the spotted salamander. So these things are about you know, a quarter inch long right now. And probably in the next two weeks, these will hatch. And what's really amazing is, although they're small, like this size right now, a quarter inch long, they grow and they'll, they'll spend, you know, three to four months in the pond. And then they metamorphose into to a subadult spotted, which at some point will be as much as six to seven, even eight inches long, big black salamanders with yellow spots. That's what these turn into. Oh, those things. So Look how cool there. is that? And there's some eggs over here. Oh, oh. Those, are wood, those are wood frog tadpoles. Okay. And they're, they're not eating the eggs, they're feeding on the algae which is that green stuff okay. growing on the eggs. But the red spotted newt actually feeds on them. Uh, they do. No. So here we're standing next to a shaggy bark hickory. And what I like about these trees is the, obviously the bark, the nuts are edible, excellent by the way, but the bark is used by, this exfoliating bark is used by bats. What they do is they land on the tree and they crawl up underneath this, this exfoliating bark uh, to roost and so it makes great bat habitat. These are one of my favorite trees for a number of reasons. Uh, anyway. Okay, this is golden ragwort here. It's a really pretty flower that blooms around spring and stays up for a very long time till like mid-summer or something. But they're really pretty. They look kind of like little sunflowers to me. Mm -hmm. And they're normally found in bunches. You can see all around us. There's mm -hmm. a lot of them. And they're like, you can find these mostly like anywhere. Yep. Yeah. You got one. Okay, so now Grandpa yeah, and Callie cool. and Tess. Tell us what you're doing, Tess. We're looking for snails by limestone rock oh, up on hills. Ooh, another one. Ooh, that is And we're lot. digging around the edges of yeah. them. Okay. And the snails will um, normally come down here and lay their babies and like live down here. Cassie. So we found a bunch. Cassie, Mama, well, this one's also alive. Yeah, we found some live ones too. Look at their teeth. Look at those teeth, especially in that one. So snails have cool. teeth? What? Yeah. Gonna they got to eat them? somehow. They have teeth. That one yeah. live one is McGregor. I talk about Tessie, that. Tessie, Wawa. Okay, this one here is alive. It's hard to see, but they're a little heavier. And um, they have this little slit in their mouth right here. And those are its teeth, those big things that kind of look like a beak. Or that's their yep, it's teeth. So Here's um, another alive they one. eat little insects. <laughs> and it's really cool because, especially when they're alive, because like it's kind of hard to see like how they live inside a shell when they could barely fit through that little hole. 
I agree. So another thing that's really cool about land snails is that an area like this, uh, below limestone, can have as much as 50 to 60 different species of land snails within four or five acres. So they can be extremely diverse, uh, especially here in Kentucky, um, along the limestone bluffs. <clears throat> and then what I'm holding here in my hand are snails that have been actually eaten by small mammals like shrews. Uh, what they do is they breach through the apex or the top of the shell uh, to get into the, the flesh of the snail and, they, and eat these. So snails are important food sources for a wide range of wildlife species, including wild turkeys, uh, grouse, uh, a number of songbirds eat them, small mammals. There's even snakes in Kentucky that actually eat slugs and, and uh, other smaller species of snails and salamanders as well. So uh, these are at the bottom of the food chain and they're important uh, food sources and they, they kind of recycle calcium back into the soils for plants and like wildfires that we enjoy. So there's a whole bunch of different reasons we should, we should um, you know, at least look for these things and appreciate them for what they are. Anyway. So we're walking in the woods and oh, wow. here's the woods and we come up on this boulder and there's a really super cool flower here. Callie, you want to show it to us? Yeah. Point to it. What is it? Is it called columbine? Yeah. yeah. It's kind so of dead right now but soon it will grow up and open. Oh no, it's actually open. I'm going to show you something. So. Here, let me hold it up. That's for as you. open as it goes. That's as open as it goes. I want you to look at this. It's alive. Okay, we'll look at that in a minute. So, see those little holes there? Yeah. Those are for the hummingbirds and other insects to go in. See how they're long and they got little tubes. Yeah. So, they pollinate. Yeah. More beautiful columbine okay, growing on the rock okay. with moss and more sedum. So here's another one of the early spring wildflowers. It's called Larkspur. And in the spring, a lot of the colors of the flowers are purples and yellows. And if you notice, a really beautiful, almost like royal purple on the plant. Another way you can identify it is because of the, the deeply cut leaves. And that's one of my favorites. We found a little live snail. It's a little, um, it's not, a baby but it's not full grown so it's juvenile it is alive because it's in there it's sh shell is a little damaged but this is Appalachina cyana and this one like is a little damaged like I said we're also talking about these snails here because they eat most of these plants we are talking about okay here we have a trillium this is the red trillium it does look like the other kind of trillium that's a lot more rare but that doesn't bloom till a little bit later so this is the red trillium they're found up mostly on hillsides in early spring or like mid spring mm -hmm. and they're really pretty they're, what do they smell like they smell like wet dogs okay. they don't smell very good and they're called but. trilliums because they have three leaves okay very good so, all right, right next to the trillium, we have something else that's The Canada cool. violet, another violet, they're all edible. And this one you can tell from the white sweet violet is, if you turn it over, these top two leaves are a little more purple than the bottom ones. And the white sweet violet just has all white. And they're, they're like, have little white middles. Mm -hmm. And another little landing pad. Yes. A deer skull. It is. Are those like the jaw of a deer? No. Yeah, it's a jaw, a, a deer jaw. See. Show them. And it has, a, it has a wiggly tooth too. Like yours. <laughs> What's this? Is that pennywort? Yeah. Tell them. Okay, so this is pennywort. Uh, it's an early flower. And Callie found it, pretty cool. And it's also an indicator of uh, dry land fish or morels. So what does that mean? It's just an association. Sometimes when you find pennywort, you're, you can also find the uh, morels close by. Rich sites, you know, mesic rich sites like this. Okay. Right. Okay, so here 
We have another little violet. This is called the yellow violet, very easy to remember. And they're all about the same size. And this one is a lot like the regular purple violet. They have the same little landing pad on the f front. And they, if you turn them around, they're both like have the little pot right here. Mm -hmm. And they're all about the same size and edible. And they're still edible. Yeah. You can even make jelly out of them. Ooh. So Kelly, tell us about your favorite wildflower. This is Fox. And why do you like it so much? Because it smells good and it's really pretty. Okay. It is. All right. And then, what's this? Stinging nettle. What's it good for? Stinging people. It's good for stinging people, but it's also good to eat. This is one of my favorite wild edible plants here in Red River Gorge uh, is stinging nettle. It's, it's highly nutritious. And, and not only that, it's delicious. Uh, so you, we gather it in the springtime uh, when it's about this high. Just, just pinch it off. It doesn't kill the plant. Uh, it resprouts. So just pinch off the top and then take this home and put it in a pot, steep it for about mm, 10 or 15 minutes, um, and then eat it. And the, the nettles, the, the stinging barbs that are on the, the, the stem, dissolve so they're not a problem uh, you won't taste them but the flavor of this is is much like that of green beans or even better and the nutritional value of this plant being a wild plant can be as much as 15 or 20 times more uh, potent in terms of, of minerals uh, than our best store-bought vegetables and things so anyway it's, it's an excellent one to gather in, in the uh, the early spring. Let me take a little closer look. There we go. Just don't touch the bottom of it. That's right. And why? Because it will hurt. We are here with the little um, foam flowers and these are the little stamens where little tiny insects come land here, pollinate them, and then leave. Um, it's not all the way bloomed yet because these ones are not bloomed like these big ones down here. And there's a whole bunch up here. You can find them by creeks and in the forest. And they're little tiny white ones. You can see next to my finger how tiny they are. 